you know, on Tuesday we begin a new year, so happy new year. And part of our, you know, celebration of you, the new year is we make new year's resolutions, right? Yes, no? Yes. <laughs> well, I never really took him seriously and the few times I made a new year resolution, mostly it was about losing the few pounds I gained over Christmas, you know, to lose weight. But I never took that seriously. And yet, the church gives us this feast of the Holy Family every year between Christmas and New Year. You think that's a time like packed with celebrations and holidays, not just secular ones, you know, New Year, Christmas, but also religious ones, Christmas, Epiphany, Baptism. Why put it in the middle? But I think the reason the church does this is because as we kind of begin a new year, and reflect on the past year as, as we make New Year's resolutions, they want us to look at our spiritual life. They want us to look at our holiness. Have we grown in holiness during 2018? What do we need to do to grow in holiness in 2019? That's part of who we are, just like we care for our physical bodies, we care of our professional careers, we care of our school careers, you know. We need to also look at our spiritual lives. Are we growing in holiness? And I think in our readings today, especially the gospel, what's most kind of be surprising to us, that Mary and Joseph had to grow in their understanding and in their holiness. They didn't understand why Jesus would be in the temple. Not just even Mary and Joseph, but Jesus himself, the gospel tells us, he grew in wisdom and understanding, in age and wisdom, before man and God. Because God in the human flesh was limited by his human being, a human being, and what a 13-year-old child would know. So Jesus had to grow in holiness. But what is holiness? A lot of times we think holiness is being perfection. No, holiness is not being perfect. Because none of us can be perfect except obviously for Jesus and our Blessed Mother. Holiness is getting to know God better, growing in our relationship with God, so we can trust God more, so like Mary and Joseph and Jesus can say yes to God when God asks of us something to do, when God reveals to us what's His plan for us, what's our role in this big plan of salvation of all humanity. Because believe it or not, each one of us has a role to play in that plan. Not just our salvation, but the salvation of the whole world. Just like Mary, just like Joseph, just like Jesus in his human form had a role, a unique role to play. As you know, if Mary did not say yes to God, if Joseph did not say yes to God to marry Mary to her in as her wife, then Jesus would not have been born. Our salvation would have been stopped because of their no. But they said yes to God. That's holiness. Saying yes to God even when it's difficult, even when it doesn't make sense. That's what holiness, growing in holiness is all about. It's a process, it's a journey, just like any relationship. We need to work at it. So how do we grow in holiness? If holiness is getting to know God better, so we can listen to His voice and know what His plan for us and trust Him enough to say yes, that means we need to take time to know God. To take time to spend with God. And that's why, as I mentioned many times before, taking 10 minutes in reflective prayer every day. Praying when we, all we do is talk to God, that's not getting to know God better, that's helping God to know us better. Because we're telling God what we want, what troubles us, what our desires, what our needs are, and that's good. But what's more important is us trying to know What's God trying to tell us? How's God trying to direct us in our lives? The Gospel tells us Mary took these things to heart. Mary was a woman of reflection. She thought about things. She pondered things. She reflected. She told the angel, how can this be? 
Knowing God better, growing in holiness, is to take more time in reflective prayer. Where maybe we just spend 10 minutes just being quiet in God's presence. Say, Lord, here I am, speak to me. Maybe it's reading the scripture, reading God's word. Maybe if we don't come to Mass on a regular basis, we start coming to Mass more regularly. Maybe we come to Mass early, so when we hear the Word of God, we are already prepared and focused to hear it and not just still settling in. Growing in holiness, maybe spending an hour each week in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Maybe going on a retreat, on a weekend retreat, or if you go on a weekend retreat, going on a whole week retreat. Reading a spiritual book, these are all different levels of growth in holiness. How are we connecting with God? How are we listening to God? And for each one of us, wherever we are on this spectrum, we have to think about what's the next step for me. But today is not the feast of the holy person, it's the feast of the holy family. Our first responsibility as parents is to help our family, both husband and wife, both our, all our children, or whatever form of family we we'll find ourselves in, to grow in holiness. And parents have a responsibility to do this. You need to be the guide to your children. Spouses, you're about helping your spouse become, achieve the potential that God has for him, planned for him, or for her. Study says that on this day, that's the day that most married men come to church. Do you know why? So they can remind their wives of the second reading which says, Wives, be obedient to your husbands. <laughs> and husbands, my advice, don't go there over breakfast. It doesn't end good for you. <laughs> but that obedience is in the context of a loving family. It's not out of nowhere. It's not about, well, you know, I'm the man, you're the woman. It's when you have the contents of love, a family that admits we're all not perfect, we make mistakes, where there is forgiveness, compassion, kindness, obedience becomes very easy. And sometimes it's not there. It's for both parties, for children and parents. When we create that context in our homes, then we are all growing holiness in our children. Like Jesus, we grow up in an environment where they seek and desire to get to know God better. See, the problem with us as Catholics, and that's, I speak from my experience, that when I was in my late 20s, my knowledge of my faith was on the second grade level. Because I was, you know, confirmed at baptism, so I didn't have to go to confirmation as a, a teenager. Most of us Catholics, that's where we start learning about our faith, understanding our faith. And to most of us, most of us, when we grew up, we didn't have that understanding of faith being a relationship. Faith was memorizing, you know, certain prayers, knowing, you know, certain teachings of the church, and that was it. Today, the Holy Spirit has revealed to us that's part of our faith. We need to know the facts. But before we get there, we have to have a relationship of Christ with Jesus, with God. That's why then we move from just knowing the facts of our faith to living our faith. Jesus was asking questions. Could you imagine a 13 year old going down to the Vatican and asking questions to the Pope and the Cardinals? Where did he get that? He got it from his home at Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. As they make sure they raise him in the faith, knowing the faith, the history of his people, God's relationship with his people. He had that hunger and desire to know more. It's good to ask questions. Parents, make sure you support your children when they ask you questions about our faith. Don't tell them what, don't ask, just do it. It doesn't work these days. You should be asking questions. I should be asking questions. That's how we grow. And if we don't know the answers, Go to someone who can help you with the answers. The today the church doesn't ask you for a blind faith. Just believe because you have to believe. The church today asks you for a faith that's seeking understanding. At some point we have to make that leap of faith and trust in God. 
But that's once we have that relationship with God that we know He's God in us and He will show us the way. Mary and Joseph did not know what's going to happen next. But they had a strong relationship with God that they were willing to say yes and continue the journey step by step. So it's not just about our holiness but about creating a family life, a context in our homes where we all can grow in holiness. The context described by that first reading and second reading, when our homes, our families become holy, then our church will become holier. Then our society will become holier. Then God will be more present in our world. But this has to start with us, with small steps. What's the next step for me in 2019? For me personally, and as parents, for younger children, what's going to be the next step for me, for my family? Maybe gathering once a night, once a week, for 30 minutes, to go over the readings, read the Sunday readings to your children from a bi children's Bible. Talk about it, encourage them to ask questions. Talk about it, how does it mean to you as a family? Maybe you can talk, have you had an incident where you lost your child or you forgot about him somewhere or her? How did you feel? Share that with your children. When children disobey their parents, as in a way you can say, well, Jesus was disobedient. When parents, children, you feel your parents don't understand you, just Jesus felt had that same experience with Mary and Joseph. Talk about it, discuss it as a family the context of mutual kindness, compassion, with forgiveness, with the reality that we're not perfect. Not by screaming and being angry at each other, speaking in our room, disconnecting, treating each other with a silent treatment. Let's do what Jesus did. Our home is God's temple. Let's sit down and talk about it and ask questions and see how together as a family we can move forward. Today is a reminder to us as we begin a new year to take some time and to think about how am I going to grow in my relationship with God? How can I be holier? And how can I help my family members, whether you're a parent or a child, a sibling, or whatever family context you're in, how you can make everyone grow in that holiness. There were three frogs sitting on a, on a rock in the middle of the pond. One of the frogs decided to jump into the water. How many frogs were left on the rock? Two. Okay, we have a two. Three, why three? The frog only decided, it did not jump. <laughs> a lot of times we make those New Year's resolutions that they never become a reality. This year, maybe your New Year's resolution is to act on your resolution.